Hey, welcome to the start of your second project, the Curry Nuki Vessel. Um, you're going to need your notebook today, so please grab your notebook and on the next clean page, please write week three, day one, Curry Nuki Vessel. So what we're going to do today, uh, you're going to get some notes on new vocabulary that go along with with this unit and today is going to be your only day of vocabulary notes so we're going to get it all done with today um, you're going to look at some pictures to help you get some ideas you're going to sketch some pictures you're going to look around your house for some new tools and perhaps even make your own tool and then you're going to take a progress pick of all of that stuff for 20 points so on the next clean page or that page that you wrote on the top of already, uh, you're going to jot down these seven new terms. So please pause the video and get these seven terms into your notebook. Great. Term number one is vessel. A vessel is a form that is functional and is meant to hold something inside. It's kind of the opposite of a sculpture. A sculpture is usually not functional and not meant to hold anything. A vessel is functional and is meant to hold something, like a pitcher or a teapot or a cup or a bowl. Those are all vessels, and you're going to be making a vessel for this project. Term number two is chawan. A chawan is a shallow tea bowl that is more wide than it is tall. Um, and you should recognize this word chawan from our history of the potter's wheel video from last Friday. Um, it's a Japanese shallow tea bowl. It's used for drinking tea even though it looks more like a bowl. Term number three is yunomi. A yunomi is a handleless teacup that is more tall than wide. So a uh, yunomi would be used for drinking green tea, which only gets heated up to about 70 degrees. So that's why you don't need a handle on a yunomi. Uh, you can just hold the cup in your hands and you won't burn yourself because green tea is not heated up as hot as black tea. Uh, a chawan is for um, uh, matcha tea. Uh, it's a shallow tea bowl that's, that's wide so you can stir it up. Uh, okay, so those are a, a couple of options of what you could possibly make for this assignment, a chawan or a yunomi. Term number four is kurinuki. Kurinuki is a Japanese process for making pots by carving or subtracting away from a block of clay. So it's going to be very different from what you did for your animal project where you were mostly using additive techniques. Now you're using mostly subtractive techniques, and I think it's going to be a really fun way to work. Term number five is aesthetic. Aesthetic is a set of ideas or opinions about what makes a work of art interesting or beautiful. We all have our own aesthetic, uh, the way we dress, the way we do our hair, um, the way we make art, the way that we, um, you know, the kind of phone case that you buy or the kind of shoes that you buy. Those are all based on your own personal aesthetic, what you consider to be interesting or what you consider to be beautiful. And the wonderful thing about it is that everybody has a different opinion about what they consider interesting and beautiful, and we're all right. Nobody is wrong about what they consider to be beautiful. So um, aesthetic is an important thing for you to understand as an artist. Term number six is wabi-sabi. Wabi-sabi is a Japanese aesthetic that considers imperfection to be beautiful because it reflects the imperfection of nature. Um, so wabi-sabi is something uh, where um, it's, it's what Japanese people uh, will, will believe um, if they see uh, something that's not 100% symmetrical or perfect, um, they believe that that's actually more beautiful because it reflects that beauty and that imperfection of nature. So that's going to be an option for you for this project. You can create something that's kind of wabi-sabi and um, it doesn't rely on extreme perfection. Uh, and I'll talk more about that in a bit. Final term for today is foot. A foot is a part of your pot that sticks out at the bottom of your vessel, uh, and the foot elevates, 
stabilizes and absorbs shock. So on most of your cups and mugs that you probably have at home, or even plates and bowls, there's probably a ring at the bottom of all those vessels that you have at your house. And that's your foot, your foot ring. Um, so that foot elevates your bowl or your cup so it sits up off the table. It stabilizes your cup or bowl so it doesn't wobble around. And it also absorbs shock. If you set it down kind of hard on the table, it uh, absorbs the majority of that shock. So you will be carving a foot of some kind on your chawan or your yunomi uh, or whatever vessel it is that you choose to make for this project. Okay, draw a line under those vocabulary words you just wrote down. Uh, I'm gonna explain the project. Uh, you do not have to write down this part of it, although you could, it would help perhaps clarify when you're doing your sketches in a little bit. Uh, for this project, you're gonna be creating a chawan, which is essentially a bowl, or a yunomi, which is essentially a cup, you could also choose to do a mug, if you wish. A mug would be like a yunomi that has a handle on it. Uh, so a mug or a, t a traditional Western teacup would be fine. You get to choose the aesthetic of your vessel. You could either go clean, which is kind of a Western aesthetic where everything is symmetrical and smooth and neat, or you could choose the aesthetic of wabi-sabi, where things are a little bit imperfect. And the cup you see in this picture definitely falls into that category of wabi-sabi. Um, you're going to create this vessel using the kurinuki technique, which means you're going to start with a block of clay and then carve the clay away from that block. And it will need to include a carved foot or feet on the bottom. It also is going to have to have consistent thickness throughout, uh, which is going to be something that I'm going to show you how to, um, how to do as you're working over the next several days. So just to give you a few examples of what you could make, um, these are some examples of chawan, which are uh, tea bowls. And uh, they are an example of a very clean aesthetic. So the curves are really round and smooth and symmetrical and the lip, which is the top edge, is really symmetrical. Um, so if this really appeals to you, you can totally carve something that has a very clean and smooth aesthetic. If you want to make something that's a little bit more funky, you can go for the wabi-sabi aesthetic. So these are chawan, or again, bowls, that have uh, a little bit more of a natural look to them, a little bit more like they're carved from the rock or a little bit wavy or, or wonky. Um, the tea bowl on the left, by the way, is an actual Japanese chawan. Um, and I think it's almost 100 years old. Uh, and this chawan, the one on the left, recently sold at an auction in England for uh, over 2,000 pounds, which in American dollars is about $26,000 for this wabi-sabi tea bowl. Um, so the, the Japanese very highly regard their pottery, their ceramics, and, and these ancient tea bowls are um, highly valued in their culture. Um, now here are some yunomi. Yunomi, remember, are handleless teacups, um, taller than they are wide. And these are yunomi that have a clean aesthetic, soft curves, um, perfectly symmetrical lip, perfectly carved foot. Uh, and so if this appeals to you, you could definitely carve a very clean looking yunomi. Uh, and these are yunomi that have more of a wabi-sabi aesthetic that are a little bit more rough, a little bit more um, based on rocks or other things found in nature. And so you could choose to carve your yunomi this way if you wish. Um, now, I mentioned you could also do a mug or a teacup for this project if you want to make something that does have a handle. You absolutely can. Um, on the left is what I would term a clean aesthetic mug because everything is, is pretty um, symmetrical and neat. And on the right is a wabi-sabi mug, one that's a little bit more based on nature, irregular, asymmetrical, um, a little bit more uh, wonky. Okay, so these are your steps for today. And this I do want you to write down in your notebook, please. So make sure you've drawn a line under your vocab for the day and then write down these steps. Step number one is to sketch three to five ideas for what kind of form, either a chawan, a yunomi, or a mug, and what kind of aesthetic, either a clean aesthetic or a wabi-sabi aesthetic that you want to try for this project. You're only gonna be making one vessel, 
but you are going to need to sketch three to five ideas because I don't want you to just go with your first idea. I want you to push yourself beyond that first idea. Next step, you're going to look for or assemble some tools, some new tools that I did not give you in your tool caddy because I did not have the ability to make or assemble enough for all of you. So one of the things you need to look for is an old used up gift card or an old ID card. Like you see here in the picture, uh, that's my old ID card from 2016. Um, and so you're going to be using that for scraping and it does need to be, a that same kind of a plastic card, uh, because it has strength yet flexibility. That's going to be important for this project. So an old used up gift card or an old ID card. Next, uh, please ask permission to use a metal spoon and butter knife, not a sharp knife. You won't need a sharp knife, like a steak knife. Um, just a butter knife, uh, one that has a little bit more strength than the plastic one that I gave you. And I want you to ask permission um, to do this just because I don't want it to be um, seen that you're damaging, you know, your, your nice silverware. This really won't damage your silverware at all. It won't harm it even a little bit. Once you're done using these things to carve the clay, you just wash them and they'll be totally fine to use with food again. Um, but I do want you to ask permission before you take a metal spoon and butter knife. Um, the other thing that you could make, and I'm going to show you how to do this in a moment, you could create your own scraper tool as long as you have a metal clothes hanger uh, hanging it up in your closet. Uh, it does, you do need a metal one, uh, one of those kind of cheapy uh, but thick wire metal clothes hangers, um, a needle nose pliers, you would need that, a fat marker, such as an old Crayola marker that you would have used when you were a kid, and then some sort of strong tape, similar to what you use to tape down your wedging cloth. Now, this making this tool is optional. You don't have to do this. Please don't go out and buy metal coat hangers. That's certainly not necessary. But if you have this stuff laying around the house, and I'm guessing probably a lot of you do, making this tool is highly encouraged. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make it. Um, you'll see an example of it sitting there on the, um, the note paper. Um, and it'll be really helpful as you're doing your carving on this project. Once you've assembled all those tools, you are going to place them on top of your notes page where you've done your notes and your sketches and written down your steps. And that's what you're going to take a photo of and submit today by 10 p.m. So here's how you make the Japanese scraper tool. So first of all, this is based on an actual tool that Japanese potters usually have at their disposal. And you'll see that up at the top uh, in the top picture there. So that's what the actual tool looks like. Yours is going to look a little bit different. Um, so to make this tool, you're going to need a metal coat hanger like the one you see in the bottom picture, a needle nose pliers, an old fat marker. Um, you know, we all have those markers that are dead and don't don't draw anymore. So that would be ideal. Uh, and then some sort of strong tape, either duct tape or packaging tape would be great. And you see on the, the picture on the right, that's kind of what the final thing should really look like. So um, to make the scraper, you're going to use the needle nose pliers to cut a seven inch long straight section of the wire coat hanger. So any straight section of the coat hanger, just use the, the cutty part of the needle nose pliers to cut that, um, that section of seven inch long uh, wire. Then use the pliers to bend the hanger like this. Please sketch on the sidelines of your notebook this little picture where it shows this um, kind of upside down squared off U shape uh, with the measurements. Three inches on each side, one inch on the top. Um, just that'll be a reminder to you of how you're going to be bending your wire. Uh, then once you've bent your wire, you're going to put the wire on the end of an old marker so that only an inch of the, the loop protrudes and then tape it very securely so it won't wiggle. So here's a quick video to show you that process. These are the supplies you're going to need for making your handmade Japanese scraper tool. Uh, so I'm going to start with the coat hanger and I'm going to cut a seven inch um, segment of straight wire. So luckily from this bent edge to that bent edge is about seven inches. So I have a needle nose pliers. I'm going to use the sharp cutting part of the pliers to cut. Ooh, that's hard to cut. 
But once I make a crimp in it, I can just bend it and break it. So this wire is very strong, which is why we're using the, the coat hanger. Um, so I just put a crimp in it. There's no way I could have cut through it. But now that crimp has weakened the wire and I can bend it. <laughs> in theory, I can bend it where I crimped it and break it. I also have a fairly small needle nose pliers, which doesn't help. There we go. Okay. So now I have an approximately seven inch strand of straight, uh, very, very strong wire. Um, if yours is not exactly seven inches, it's okay. So now I'm going to cut, or I'm going to measure again. Mine's a slightly less than seven inches. So approximately three inches in, I'm going to make a bend. So I'm going to use my needle nose pliers to hold it really firmly. And then I'm going to bend it with my hand so I get a really nice kind of sharp angle. Uh, and then another, uh, the three inches on the other side, I'm going to make uh, a same, a similar bend. So again, three inches in, I'm going to place my needle nose pliers right there, and I'm going to bend it with my hands. So you're going to end up with something that looks kind of like this, all right? And my ends are not exactly equal, but that's okay. That's the part that's going to get taped to the marker. So I'm going to take my marker, uh, and the reason I'm having you use a marker is because it'll be a firmer tool if it's a bigger handle. You could tape this to your pencil, but it won't be as firm uh, for you to grip. And you're going to be doing some heavy-duty carving with this tool, so that's why I wanted you to have a marker. Um, so tape it to the non markery end, right? So you could still use the marker. Uh, so just tape it to the end there. Um, get some pretty heavy-duty tape. I have packaging tape here. Masking tape will do the trick. Scotch tape, not so much. Um, so I'm going to tape this on in a way so that only about an inch is protruding off of the edge of the marker. Um, so the majority of my wire is actually going to be reinforced and wrapped around, um, or sorry, the majority of my wire is going to be wrapped tightly with tape around the marker. So I'm going to hold it in place. I'm going to get my tape um, in place as well. And I'm going to wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap um, really tightly so that when I try and wiggle this, it doesn't wiggle. All right. So it's kind of terrible looking, like pretty janky, but it's going to do the job because when I try and move it, it doesn't move. So now this is going to be what you're going to use to hollow out and carve out the inside of your um, of your cup or your bowl. And if you don't have a, a metal coat hanger, which I know not everybody has metal coat hangers, uh, you know, anymore. A lot of them are plastic or that kind of fuzzy, whatever felt material. Um, a spoon will be a good second choice. So this is not mandatory to make this tool, but it will really help you if you happen to have a metal coat hanger and a needle nose pliers lying around. So again, um, a reminder of what you're going to be doing today. You're going to be looking for an old gift card or ID. You're going to be looking for a spoon, a metal spoon, and a metal um, butter knife. I know that's not pictured in my picture here, but it would be helpful if you had one, and, and you're going to ask permission for that. And then you're going to scavenge around your house to see if you can find a metal coat hanger, find a needle nose pliers, and then create uh, this carving tool. Um, the one that I sh have shown you on the screen here is double sided. It's got a triangular end on one side and a round end on the other. You do not have to make a double sided one. Um, you can uh, for different kinds of carving techniques, but um, the flat sided one is the one that would be really helpful to make. Then snap a picture of all those new tools that you've assembled or made on top of your notes so I can see your sketches for today and then get that in by 10 p.m. Um, message me if you have any questions. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks. Good luck.